In the last couple of years, I've managed to hitch rides in two of the most incredible cars on Earth. First, Andy Frost's Red Victor 1, a 1972 Vauxhall Victor, which hit 189 miles an hour in eight seconds and cracked 0 to 60 in one second. <laughs> Then last year, I met up with Yorkshireman John Sleeth and his Audi Coupe, another street legal car that happens to have over 2,000 horsepower under the bonnet. Oh, that is There's something deeply fascinating about a bloke that spends years beavering away in a lockup, quietly creating the ultimate masterpiece vehicle. Because at the end of the day, even if they had a million quid to spend on a supercar, it just wouldn't hit the sweet spot. Take this man, for example. His name's Charlie Broomfield, and he's got a Rover SD1. And what makes Charlie's car so special? Well, I'll let him start it up, because that could give you a clue. If you're around in the early 1940s, you might recognise that sound. That's because under that bonnet is a 27-litre Merlin V12 engine from a tank. It's the same engine that was used in a lot of World War II aircraft, like the Lancaster bomber and the Spitfire. During the 1930s and 40s, more than 170,000 Merlin engines were produced for all types of military vehicles, including the fighter planes that led us to victory in the Battle of Britain. So what happens when you stick a Spitfire engine in an old Rover? Well, I'm about to find out. Such an amazing delivery of power. I've never, never been in a vehicle so low geared, so low revving. Yeah. We're really chucking it into corners, and it's, it's actually pretty stable. It's not bad, is it? I love the fact that it's got air conditioning, electric windows. Yeah, let's see if that's. Uh... Oh, there it is. I, I just put the AC on. That cold? Is, yeah, it is cold. Yeah. It's drying my eyes out. Yeah. <laughs> He bought the engine from a military breaker's yard, setting him back just £1,000. And because it's a pre-2001 car, the tax is only 205 quid a year. Does it actually owe you very much money? No, not really. I bet it's less than 10 grand. Really? Yeah. Is the car finished now? Is that it? Is no, it done? it'll never be finished. I'll be finished before it is. Really? <laughs> yeah, I reckon. Charlie's biggest problem has been making the car go fast. You see, despite having way more torque than a Bugatti Veyron, the engine's rev limit of around 3,000 RPM would give a measly 50 mile an hour top speed through the standard car's gearbox. To overcome this dilemma, genius engineer Charlie has developed a system using a gearbox from an old Leyland bus. What that does is multiplies the RPM from the engine three times onto the back axle, which means you can travel really fast, but with very low RPM. So far, Charlie's had his rover up to a slightly worrying 120 miles an hour. Today's mission, however, is to go faster, much faster. Who knows, above 120 miles an hour, this thing could take off. <laughs> Wheel spin, a lot. We're doing 70 already, we're doing 80 already, we're doing 90 already, 1,550 pounds feet, V12, 27 litre. We would have been on this runway in an aeroplane with this engine and it will be taking off around about now, but we're staying on the ground, I hope. At 1,500 RPM, it's doing 120. And we're now doing 128 miles an hour, 135 miles an hour, 139, 40, 145, wow, 147, 49, just under 2,000, 150 now. 150, 151, 152, 153, 154, 154, 157, 158, 159, 160, 161, 162. I can smell your brake pads. Yeah, I'll bet you can. I'll yeah. go. <laughs> That's really good. Thanks very much. That is great. It's been a pleasure. It felt like a miracle, but Charlie's not stopping there. He's aiming to hit 200 miles an hour in the next 12 months. And the only place in Europe where this is possible? A runway in Germany. 
Charlie, you're a ruddy hero. More throttle on the exit, I'll wind the lock, hit the rev limiter. No time to change gear, because I'm back on the brakes. 